I'm going to roll us on to our third article, and I say rolling because we're talking about autonomous shuttles. So oh, that's a, a good pun. That's a great pun. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Yeah. It's talking about Nobina, um, which is the largest auto transport bus group in the Nordic region. So that's like Denmark. Um, they create an electric autonomous shuttle called Link that can carry up to 15 people, and it can go up to 20 kilometers per hour. So think about like a big kind of slow bubble that holds 15 people in it, but it's safe transport and it's completely autonomous. And they're testing it starting for six months at Denmark Technical University. What is it about college campuses? Uh, yeah, so for our listeners that don't know, Daniel and I went to George Mason University, and I think, what was it, like two, three years ago at this point, Starship Technologies rolled out their delivery robots within our university to test it out before spreading it everywhere else. Like, I guess it's just the fact yeah, that... It was the first place that these robots were tested in the U.S., right. and it was at our college campus, and now they're testing autonomous buses for the first time in Denmark at Denmark Technological University. I also know in the U.S. they've tested autonomous shuttles for the first time at Texas, A&A, Texas AMU, uh, University of Michigan, University of Southern Florida. It's something about colleges and new technology. I think it's just what, what, like people are more open to change. Like maybe we're just a perfect dynamic because we're secluded from everyone else, the rest of the city, and you can really test out new tech to see how it works with people. Is, is maybe that's it? I don't know. Or they've only got one governing body, governing body to talk to, and that's the university rather than you know, talking about using public land for that. But and if the students don't like it, well, that's tough. It's happening. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it is really interesting how they use colleges. And yeah. I know you and I were really excited to see the Starship Technologies robots on our campus. Um, I'd be really excited to go to Denmark Techno University and ride one of these autonomous shuttles as well. Um, this kind of fits into a bigger picture of what Denmark is trying to do okay. in the Copenhagen area. They call it their Denmark Grand Transportation Plan. Copenhagen is one of the biggest cities in the Nordic re Nordic region, mm -hmm. and they're building train stations to connect 29 different areas in the suburbs to Denmark, or sorry, to Copenhagen. So basically, the entire Copenhagen suburban area will be able to use mass transport to get anywhere in that entire suburban area without having to drive a car, reduce the carbon footprint, and everyone can trust and rely on mass transport, which would be great. That, that's a great step towards actually like green transportation, making sure everyone uses public transportation instead of using their own cars. Yeah, that's a great, it's, it's that's a solid that first step. It seems to be lost on a lot of us, a lot of the cities in the United States Absolutely. is having a reliable public transportation system that you can trust. But one of the issues they were finding with this grand transportation plan is that they still have trouble getting people in the first mile and last mile of transport. So it's really, really expensive and labor intensive to set up a ton of light rail stations everywhere. So it's not like, makes sense. you know, you can have a bus, a bus stop on every block, but it doesn't really make sense to have a train station on every single block. So they still need some way to get people from their houses to the train station and then also from the train station to their destination in the city. So, what they're using or planning on using is these autonomous shuttles and they're testing it first at DTU. And basically if this works, they will have some guidelines on how they plan to move forward and integrate some autonomous systems to do the last mile of transportation. Um, micro mobility, as we like to call it, you know, some scooter electric scooter companies like Lime and Bird, they also kind of try to address this issue mm -hmm. of using, you know, so some type of sustainable electric transport to handle this micro mobility, you know, from, you know, you have a reliable way that gets you from point A to point B. Um, but there are tiny trips in there that you have to make that you also want to be low impact on the environment. They're essentially like covering end to end transport, right? Like they want to make sure from you getting out of your house to going wherever you want to go, you have a green, affordable and efficient method of transportation, right? And yeah. these shuttles are going to come into the first and last bit of that process. That is and so cool. They're starting with DTU, they're going to be collecting a lot of data, seeing how the students use them, seeing how the community uses them, also how it integrates with the rest of the community. So how does it do in traffic? How does it deal with other cars? Um, how does it do in weather conditions? These are type of things that you can't test in a closed loop system. You have to actually go try it out in the real world to collect this data and understand it. They're going to take this data back and use it to inform the grand transportation plan. So basically, it'll be the last piece of the puzzle for Denmark to connect Copenhagen and all the suburbs with sustainable transport. I'm excited for the Danish people. Honestly, I hope it works out for them so that we can get it here. 
because I am tired of driving into D.C. I, I just want an autonomous bus that takes me to the train, that takes me to the city, that's affordable and efficient. You know, small wishes. Yeah, that's uh, what dreams are made of. <laughs> exactly. 